Sorry, I just had to adjust something here. Okay. So this is the Avengers. Yeah. And and um, it's hard to say. It was what Marvel was promising for years. I mean, and you know what? I mean, right when they were about to come out with Iron Man, and they said that they had this seven-year plan, or this, not eight, seven years. Like eight-year? No, 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 four-year. It was a four-year plan, it turned out It turned out to be, because they said, okay, we're going to do individual movies about all these superheroes. There's going to be one intertwined universe, and, and we are eventually going to do the Avengers. Now, at the time, I thought, this is never going to work. You cannot put someone like Thor in in a live action movie and have it work. But I was surprised by that. Then I said, okay, you can't put someone like Captain America in a movie and have it work. I was surprised by that. So so upon finally seeing the Avengers, seeing it come fully into fruition. It paid what, up on its promises. It was a sight to behold, and I think it's a real testament to to the to the dedication and the clear love that's that the that the folks over at Marvel have for these for these heroes. I mean, you can tell that, yeah, obviously this is done for for commercial reasons. I mean, think of, I mean, there was there was a certain there there was obviously the object of money in the back of a lot of people a lot of people's minds, but there was actual creativity. There was actual there was actual effort put into making you care about all of these individual superheroes. Before actually just giving you a team up, it's See, not Batman and Robin. Seeing as we have actually gone through individual journeys with Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, and the and the Hulk, two individual journeys in the case of Iron Man, we can appreciate this team up that much more. I mean, that makes it all the more satisfying to see these characters I, I, interact. I think that this movie wouldn't have worked as well if they hadn't had the set of movies because you already know, you already get a feel for their personality even without the Avengers set up because they already, like you said, have their individual adventures. Yeah, and the, and the story is not anything... It's, it's, it's not good. Exact. It's bad guy calm, good guys have to beat him up. Yeah, it's... That's that's the extent of the... It's plot. not it's not exactly a Christopher Nolan or a David Cronenberg movie. It's... But it balances that out with very, very clever writing, amazing action sequences, and hilarious banter. comedy. Banter. Yeah, yeah. Basically, Loki Loki comes into contact with the uh, Chitari, I believe they're called this this alien race of beings, and he yes, and he basically comes to Earth and he and he says, "I'm going to conquer Earth in the name of these Chitari, and they will leave me as its ruler." So Loki comes to Earth, and Nick Fury uh, Nick Fury activates the Avenger Initiative, where he where he calls upon. Them. Earth's mightiest heroes. Where he calls upon all the heroes that he is. A bowman, a secret agent, and the world's first super soldier. Yeah, so he brings together so he brings together Iron Man, he brings Thor, he brings Thor Bruce Banner. Well, technically he wasn't supposed to be a member, but Well, Bruce Banner, he 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 was brought on as as an intelligence figure. So so he brings Bruce Banner, he brings Iron Tom. Man, he brings Thor, he brings Black Captain, Widow. Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Hawkeye eventually joins yeah, eventually. in, played again by Jeremy Renner, reprising his cameo role from Thor. But yeah, all of these all of these heroes come together to stop Loki, the god of mischief and Thor's half brother. From and it all culminates in this huge battle in New York City, where Iron Man dies. Well, the acting I thought was pretty good. No, you can't start with that. That's how we always start. We you can't down start. The story. With, you can't start with that. But what did you think of the acting? The acting was good. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is still fantastic. Robert Downey Man. Jr. The, the one problem I can see with this movie is that Robert Downey Jr. steals every scene he's in. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So it's really, it's really not fair. Really, the only the only scenes where he doesn't. No, the only scenes where he actually has some pretty steep competition is are his scenes with Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Because Mark Ruffalo is... There's no Edward Norton in this movie, unfortunately. Mark Ruffalo is my favorite Hulk. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo takes over from uh, Edward Norton as Bruce Banner because Edward Norton apparently was pretty difficult to work with because he took such an active part in, in the story and the making of The Incredible Hulk. 
Um, like I probably said in my Incredible Hulk review, there was there were a few conflicts of interest, but all in all, they did not want him back. They so they went to Mark Ruffalo, and what I like about Ruffalo is that he kind of he's slightly reminiscent of Edward Norton's. You Bruce can Banner. tell he's been through hell. That. But at the same time, he kind of puts his own spin on it. He kind of puts this his own kind of put upon um, nervous energy to it. I mean, he he's very zen throughout this movie. I mean, yeah, he's he's nervous, and you can obviously tell just in the way, just in his mannerisms and his and his uh, surprisingly subtly effective performance. That yeah, he's nervous, and he really doesn't want the Hulk to come out. He's clearly afraid of this entity inside him. But at the same time. <laughs> At the same time, what what I like about this movie is that he, he is still just constantly maintains, trying to remain calm. He's he and Ruffalo's dry humor. His his method of keeping calm is definitely a dry sense of humor. But yeah, I mean the thing, probably my favorite uh, my favorite bit of chemistry between two actors in this movie is between Robert Downey Jr. and Mark Ruffalo because those two have amazing chemistry. They have great comedic timing with each other. Um, and like I said, it's probably the only time in times in the movie where Downey doesn't steal the scene. I mean, Ruffalo he, keeps up with him. That was the best scene where they're just talking. Well, yeah. I mean, those those are my favorite scenes in the movie because honestly, those are my two favorite characters in the movie. Um, they are definitely the most compelling, but that's not to den- don't denote any of the other actors. Scarlett Johansson is still great. Well, here's I, I, I'm not according to you. Shut up, uh, Chris the- Evans. Still a very balanced performance. You could tell he in this one he's a lot less uh, happy-go-lucky. He's much more of a serious soldier. Um, whoever played Coulson was still great. Clark Gregg. Clark Gregg was still great, though. He could have given a better performance if he had been in there longer. Oh, well. Um, Samuel L. Jackson and Nick Fury, again, perfect casting. He gets to shine this time around. Because he has more to do than just a skull Tony Stark. Yeah. Anyway. Um, who plays Maka? Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. He is a funny one. Especially when he's talking to Tony Stark in the final battle. I like his uh, I like his cynical deliveries and, and very sarcastic demeanor. And for someone as potentially ridiculous as Hawkeye, I think he works. Green Arrow is better, though. Green Arrow, yeah. Well, okay, well, what do you think of Chris Hemsworth as Thor? He's still pretty good. I never thought much of Thor. Well, well he's, he's, he's just kind of a simpleton. Well, well, Hemsworth does still bring that kind of rugged nobility to Thor. That's true. But, but uh, yeah, Chris Evans still still maintaining that very likable everyman quality that I think works for Captain America. Um, I don't know. In this one, he doesn't really seem like the everyman. Well, he you can you can tell that you can tell he's a soldier, but you can also tell that he still has a good heart. I guess. Well, I like I like the scenes where where Coulson is kind of fawning over him because. Oh my god, I hate those scenes. Those are so awkward. Well, well, the thing is, the thing is, whenever when he's called in to lead the team, as it were, he you can tell without even him saying a word, just by the way, just by the way that Evans kind of silently plays it, that he does not think he is cut out for this. I mean, he's complete. He's still completely out of his element. He, he's, he's, he's just introduced to all of these other weird, weird superheroes. So, yeah, I still, I still really liked Captain America in this movie. And really, the only issue I have with it is they didn't, is that they didn't take advantage of something that actually the Ultimate Avengers animated movie did, which was. The team not working? What? The team not working together well? Well, no, they, they captured that in this movie, but, but what I wish they did was... What I really wish they, they would have done is is show Captain America kind of uh, visiting visiting his, uh, his allies' old graves and kind of trying to adjust to society a little more. We get a little bit of that, especially in some deleted scenes, but I, again, I wish we had gotten more. I mean, the opening, the first act of the movie does seem like like okay. Well, let's let's get to the let's get to the Avengers now. It's not it's not really rushed per se. It's just that not 
as much time as necessary, I felt, was devoted to certain things. However, Scarlett Johansson still sucks as Black Widow. She's awesome. She sucks. She's and great. All the more, and what's all the more apparent is that you have all of these other better female characters in these movies that are played by better actresses in these movies because you have Gwyneth Paltrow in Iron Man as not as Pepper, as Pepper Potts. Not a fighter. Well, yeah, but it doesn't matter if they're if they're a fighter. They're better characters and they're and they're played by better actresses. You have Betty Ross played by Liv Tyler in The Incredible Hulk. You have I don't even remember her. You haven't seen The Incredible Hulk in a while. There's there's Natalie Portman as Jane Foster in eh. the Thor movies. Eh. There's and then there's Haley Atwell as Agent Carter in, in Captain America. And I know she's like seventy. Yeah. I know that that these guys are not going to join the Avengers, but I'm just saying it makes it makes Scarlett Johansson's lackluster Black Widow all the more. It makes her stand out all the mu- all much more as as just a real weak link in the chain. I mean, really, why is she on the Avengers? Because she's a good. Because player. she's the chick. <laughs> she is the Duh. Ch- she is the chick. Duh. Really, she. There's no reason for her to be on there because if we're talking just. If we're talking purely tactical purposes, she would serve as, like, the infiltrator. But if we're talking, like, in something like this, and it's a big battle, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. But, that said, and also that is your... Shut up! That is your opinion, and, and my opinion, and most of other people's opinions, say that Scarlett Johansson is a good Black Widow because she has that stone-cold performance that a spy, that, like, a triple agent should have. They need to have that poker face. Yeah, but she adds nothing to the team dynamic. Yes, she does. She adds nothing. It's just her deadpan expression interacting with all the other people who are are trying their hearts out to to interact with each other. She has plenty of purpose. She can... She learns... She figures out Loki's plan... Shut up. Yeah, but she doesn't... Shut up. That doesn't stop him from... She has some great one-liners. And... I like her when she's... When she's having... Com- having conversations with Hawkeye. Because they have very good chemistry. Where was Hawkeye in Captain America 2? Never mind. Tom Hiddleston is still pretty good as Loki. Yeah. I mean, he has, I, I he think has she, just the right amount of humor, and and he charm, has that while one, also kind of intimidating. He has that one smile that he does throughout the entire movie. <laughs> but, but yeah, he's he's actually fairly imposing in how elegantly and uh, how elegantly menacing he is. Um. So, so yeah, really not too many weak links in the acting per se, except for one. Shut up. Um, the action scenes are filmed very well. There is absolutely no shaky cam. There's nothing I can complain about with the action scenes, other than that, other than the fact that you don't get enough Incredible Hulk. Well, the thing, well, the thing is, whenever when they're doing battle in New York, and this is actually why a lot of people were comparing it to the Transformers movies, and how like this is better than what Michael Bay did, is that you can actually tell what is going on. Number one, you can tell which Avenger is which. I mean, I mean, yeah, the, the Chitauri don't really have a whole lot of identity. Um, yeah, they don't build up the Chitauri enough. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just Loki, and the Chitauri are just his method of opposing the Avengers. It's basically his nameless army. But here's... But the thing is, the thing is, you can tell... The movie clearly shows each Avenger working together. It, they it they shows... take something from Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 with uh, Iron Man's beam reflecting off of Captain America's shield. Yeah, I mean, they. you can clearly see what each Avenger's uh, abilities are. All of the action scenes, yeah, th- yeah, you can argue that they're pretty over the top. But, but it's, it's... To me, this is the best action comedy that there is. Currently. People will disagree with you on that. Yeah, I know, but that's their opinion. But, but yeah, that... Honestly, from an action perspective, even if you are not a fan of these characters, or even if you are completely unfamiliar with the established universe, I still think you can have a, lo- a really good time with this. And just the interactions with the characters, whether you ca- whether you know about those backstories or not, they're still worth hearing 
And also, if you and also if you've seen Transformers and you didn't like those action scenes, you could still probably get one or two really cool moments from this movie because uh, they were shot so well and they were like framed and executed so masterfully. And also, like uh, the effects are the effects are okay. I mean, the effects the effect, are, they work. They work. I mean, they're, I mean, they're for what that time, for for that time, with like two years ago, I'd say for that time. Well, but anyway, like they're, they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination. And for them to accomplish this much with this much amount of stuff, it's incredible how how good they were able to make those look. Because you could make the argument that there's um, too much CG. No, you could make the argument that um, well, Transformers looked better. Well, their whole budget was based on that. This one, they had to get room for... Um, for character development. For character development and the good special effects. And for what they did, I think they did very, very well, and it was very masterfully done. Well, the difference between this and Transformers is that this, is, this actually tells a story that you want to see unfold. Robots, robots go, go to cars. They go boom, brrr. And also, the characters in this one are... Likeable. Imagine they're, that. They are likable. They they are not annoying. We're looking at you, Shia LaBeouf. The and also Shia the LaBeouf. act and also the acting is good. Yeah. So it's not just a bunch of one off characters going like <laughs> to the camera. So here's 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 the thing, and I don't mean to offend anyone by saying this, but it but any comparison this has to to Michael Bay's Transformers movies any debate is basically over in less than a minute because this is superior in every conceivable way. Every conceivable way this is superior to Michael Bay's Transformers movies. Except for the amount of sparks they have. Well, that was the Avengers, I guess. Yeah, it was incredible. It was Very much worth the wait. It was a satisfying payoff. Now, I have a, a quick story. When I first went to see this with him, the first weekend it came out, or maybe it was the second, I don't remember. It was the first. It was the first. I was feeling like complete crap. Like, I had, my stomach hurt, I had a migraine. It was horrible. Then I went to see this movie, and suddenly none of that mattered because I just saw a great movie. It made me feel a lot better just talking about it with him on the way home. Just, it made me feel like I had, like I was having fun. If I, were, if I were to list a few minor gripes with this movie, is that more Hulk? Well, well, no. Some of the some of the shots really seem kind of unnecessary and and needlessly silly. Um, like there's this American trade. Well, no. Some of some of the shots, like cinematography, and like, and this actually, this is actually where I kind of side with uh, with. Uh, cinematographer Wally Pfister who who did the cinematography for The Dark Knight Rises and who actually criticized the cinematography in this. Um, well, the shots... Some, okay, I'll give you an example. There's this one shot where you see all the Avengers arguing and the, and, at first, one. and at first it seems kind of cool. It's like you have this kind well, of no, panning shot of them arguing. Yeah, I mean, the camera is panning around and then all of a sudden it, it just... Kind of, it kind of zooms out a little bit and then it, it zooms like, out and lifts upside down. And then slowly goes upside down behind Loki's spear, which is also in the... or staff, which is also in the room. And I'm like, why did they do that shot? I don't know. I think what? it was just to be artsy. There are a lot of shots like that, too, and it's it's just odd. I mean, it it, it actually kind of took me out of it for a second. I was, I was like, what is that? Why? Um, the point? There is no point. I know. But, yeah, aside from that, that's really the only issue with it. If you're looking for anything deeper, then, I mean, if you're looking for some, some kind of commentary on the human condition, or or some, some deep superhero movie, you're not going to find it here. But, honestly, if you're looking for that, then Go watch Dark you Night. honestly don't know what you signed up for watching The Avengers. Go watch Dark Knight. Seeing all of these colorful superheroes on the cover you know, all in like really battle torn armor shooting the the thing at a diagonal to the right kind of thing in these costumes in these costumes with Hulk going like Ugh. 
Yeah, yeah, so... Go home. You're drunk. Oh, no, go watch... Go watch the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, which... Or, if you're looking for something animated, go watch... Full Metal Alchemist. I don't know. Anyway, that was The Avengers. And... Next up is Iron Man 3. Yeah. Enjoy watching it over and over and over.